Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market here with a top 10 list of cards that I think are going to be printed in Modern Horizons. So Modern Horizons is a little bit unique. All of the cards that are going to be contained in the set are either going to be brand new cards for the modern format or reprinted from the Legacy Pool. Now Legacy is a little bit tricky because of the reserve list and that leaves us with cards that are not reserve list or not too high on the power level for modern. So these are the 10 cards that I think are most likely to be reprinted. Starting off at number 10. Number 10, I have Shardless Agent. I got this at number 10 for a reason because Ancestral Visions exist. Bloodbred Elf wasn't enough to push Ancestral Visions over the top, neither was As Foretold. So I don't think Shardless Agent will be either. It's just a 2-2 body. But I do think this is a, a card that the Soul Tide list do want, like a Shardless Agent into an Assassin's Trophy or a Thought Seize, or even an Ancestral Visions at that point. Seems pretty good in Modern, and it seems to be the perfect power level of Modern at this point. So again, if they're not going to ban Bloodbred Elf, they deemed it good enough for Modern, I think this is one they could easily experiment with and not have any problems with the card. Number 10, because of Ancestral Visions, otherwise it could easily be higher. There's another card that is has a price point that I think will be attractive. This will be a card that we'll definitely see play in Modern and, and increase the value of what it's at currently because it doesn't really have a lot of demand in Legacy after the Deathrite sh uh, Shaman banning. It really pushed this whole Shardless Agent deck out. On to my number nine, I think if any color needs help in modern, it is white and it's white creature based decks. This one's at number nine too because it might break some of the creature combo decks like the Vizier or the Devoted Druid combos. However, it is turn three and then turn four you have to cast it and it's really televising uh, that you're going to be comboing off. Uh, we already have easier ways to assemble that like the Elder's Evolution. This also has that high price point tag which I think is what they want to be pushing to sell this set. Now, they have to have cards like this because I think they learned their lesson from Commander 2018. Commander 2018, they're banking on the new cards to sell the set. They had a lot of success with Commander 2017 cards holding a high price tag and being the chase cards like Teferi's Protection. However, 20, Commander 2018 contained very little cards that were brand new that people just were buying it uh, off the shelf to try to get. So the lack of reprints out of Commander 2018 led for dismal sales for it. I don't think they're going to repeat this problem with Modern Horizons. So Recruit of the Guard is one of those cards that holds a high price tag that isn't on the reserve list that I think is safe enough for Modern. On to number eight. Number eight is Gamble. This is another one that I've pushed to on the low end of the top 10 because it could be broken. However, Gamble, I think the Arclight Phoenix decks or the uh, any other cards that utilizes the graveyard that's kept in check with Rest in Peace and Leyland of the Void would love this card. It's a free spell. Uh, basically, you're casting a spell to go get a card, throwing a card in the graveyard. Uh, we see cards like Burning Inquiry holding this sort of uh, idea in modern and like I said many decks I think could definitely use for gamble it's got a good price point it's, it's something that definitely won't be considered a bulk rare uh, the price of course will go probably up even after a reprint for this set because of the demand of the card and again the power level is not crazy if any tutor is going to be printed from legacy into modern I think this one's the safest one the rest of them oh man a lot of those I think would be way too broken for modern like the demonic tutors the vampire tutors the all those particular ones on to the number seven. Number seven is the Mother of Runes. I think Mother of Runes is the perfect card for modern right now. It will help uh, slow down the format. It will also give the creature-based white decks some play against the how oppressive it is to try to be playing creature-based white decks. So Soul Sisters, Death and Taxes, humans, of course, will like this. It's a great way for them to have to answer it on turn one. Either eat the Mother of Runes or Mother Runes is going to protect a creature from then on out. This is a really good card that I don't think they could print in standard. This is the only way they're going to get into modern. I think they want it in modern. And uh, like I said, the perfect card for modern. The not too high power level, definitely not low power level, exactly where they want it. They've been printing this a lot in supplemental products. And again, this is this is a card that I think uh, is, is, is needed in modern. So we get over to white card. This is Containment Priest. I think that Containment Priest will make a lot of cards that are considered too degenerate for the format a little more viable to actually be printed either from Legacy or taken off the ban list right now. I'm looking at like Golgari Grave Troll. If Containment Priest existed, would it be able to combat Dredge enough? Same thing with like Living End, 
uh, the the Phoenix decks again. This is a card that just completely shuts them down. Phoenix has been really getting more and more of the meta share, and I think it wants an answer like Containment Priest. A lot of people's complaints about Modern is the lack of answers. There are definitely enough threats or enough degenerate combo-based decks and aggressive decks, but there's just a lot of lack of answers, and I think Containment Priest is exactly that answer that Modern wants uh, for creatures being reanimated uh, into play. Speaking of combo enablers, though, I like Xanted Swarm to be reprinted in, or printed for this set. This is C, has C played it in a lot of combo-based decks in Legacy. Belchers played it. Uh, I think it was one of the first decks that really picked it up. But uh, We have a lot of Storm-based decks or, or Tendrils decks that have played it in Legacy. It just helps enable your combo-based deck. And speaking of Recruit of the Guard or those creature-based decks... The Swarm enables those Eldritch Evolution decks. You just need to attack in with the Swarm, and then you can guarantee that you can cast those spells. I mean, those, Evolution is definitely a feel-bad card when it gets countered or when it gets responded to. And this is the perfect card from the sideboard to be bringing in versus those if we do see like the Charlotte's Agent decks, the Thoughtseize decks really starting to take a big portion of the meta for Modern, this is a great card to combat that. It either needs to eat a bolt as soon as you cast it, or you're probably going to get a lot of value out of the Swarm. Now we get on to the really juicy stuff. This is probably one that should be my number one, because I think this format was really, or this uh, set was really designed to get Counterspell into Modern. So Counterspell is never going to get it to Modern through Standard. They would never print Counterspell in Standard. It's too powerful for Standard. It's too oppressive for Standard. However, in Modern, when you compare it to Mana Leak, I think this card is... I think that people have to make a decision, a really, really hard decision, between Counterspell or Mana Leak. In Legacy and Vintage, Counterspell is a lot easier just to slap in because it's the difference between just fetching and fetch shocking. So Counterspell is going to probably require two fetches, two shocks. And so you're already down quite a bit of life to guarantee that turn two counterspell. Mana Leak is usually just one fetch, one shock, and then any other land at that point works. And the difference between that life total, I think, is huge in Modern. And for that reason, I mean, what Modern deck can actually afford to pay three for Mana Leak? I mean, Mana Leak is basically a hard counter right now in Modern. Uh, counterspell, I don't think, will be that, that you know, it's going to be good versus those Control versus control matches for sure. But at that point, it's pretty fair. It's pretty mirrored. So I think that this set, Modern Horizons, was specifically designed to get Counterspell into the format. That brings us to the number three. Number three is Baleful Strix. Baleful Strix, I think, is another one of those cards that has the right price point. This will probably be a rare again. It was a rare in the Eternal Masters. Uh, this is the Soul Tide base decks or any. Blue Tempo or blue, blue black control base deck, I think, will definitely needs this type of card. It trades with a hollow one. It is exactly that roadblock that they need to get you to the next turn. Uh, flying Death Touch and draw a card, that means you're going to get the value out of it. So I, I like Baleful Strix for this reason. I think it will open up a lot of these tempo based strategies or these, these kind of uh, control base or, or mid range based decks to actually be able to compete in the excessively hyper aggressive or combo. Uh, centric decks we have going on in modern right now so this one i think is another card that is too powerful standard there's no way it's going to get into modern they probably wanted it in modern and this is the only way to do it on it to my number two now this is the card that i've picked for the buy a box promo so one of the things with the uh, modern horizons is going to have a mo uh, a buy a box promo that will not be contained in the set and Toxic Deluge, I think, fits the bill perfectly for this because I don't think they want this in a draft environment, but they definitely want it in modern. And then, again, this is it's too powerful for standard, but it's probably right on the, the power level for modern. So Wrath of God right now and Damnation just seem to be a little too slow. Uh, Toxic Deluge has a huge upside, but also a huge downside of paying life. So I think this is perfect for the modern format. Helps against go wide. It is a hard wrath for three mana but it can come at a cost when you have to pay five to get rid of a reality smasher for example so i think it's perfect power level there are plenty of aggressive decks where this is going to be completely useless against because this gives me too much damage uh but again it's 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 done it has its slot a very deserving slot in legacy very popular card in legacy not on the reserve list it was just a commander card at one point and it's something i think modern can definitely definitely use all right, so that brings me to number one. I think this is pretty much a shoe in This is Cabal Coffers. I have a lot of love for this card because this was the first card that I played in Competitive Magic at the time. In Torment, I played a mono-black control list. 
Uh, this also pairs with Urborg to Yogmoth. He has a huge downside. If you don't have Urborg, you have to have three other swamps out before this is just going to uh, net neutral. And then at four, it starts actually adding mana. So I like this for some of these like control-based decks, like the good old uh, decks, Drain Life-based decks. Not too powerful uh, for modern, definitely not too. I mean, it might not even see play in modern, but these are the type of cards I think they're going to try to actually get into modern. Now, I, with this list, I didn't really scour through decks that are not power enough for legacy, but probably could be good toolbox cards for modernizing of cards like Ravenous Bayloth, for example. That's the one where you can sacrifice a beast to gain four life. Uh, those type of cards, I think, are... Uh, definitely cards they're going to try to put in this set. But these are all cards that currently do see some sort of play in Legacy or have in the past or have a high price tag. Cabal Coffers definitely fits this bill. This is a card that they've been wanting to reprint for some time. It's got an almost $40 price tag. You can definitely sell packs. Commander players love it. And I, they're going to need cards like this. Like I said, Commander 2018 should be a huge warning sign to them that they need reprint equity in this set. They cannot just rely on their new cards. Currently, there are two cards that they spoiled the uh the cobalt therapist as well as sarah the planeswalker i don't think have enough demand for modern they're both relatively unknown so that i could see going either way i actually don't think that either one are going to impact the the uh format too much they both seem to be like sideboard cards to me however the list that i've put together i think has the perfect power level uh comparatively to uh what modern wants there's a lot of cards like true name nemesis or uh, Swords to Plowshare, Wasteland, Force of Will, Tendrils of Despair, Lotus Petal, uh, Hymn to Torak, uh, Fire Confluence, Exhum. Those type of cards that are eligible, those power level of those cards are huge compared to modern. And I don't know that they're going to experiment with those type of cards in the Modern Horizons version one maybe when uh two comes out within a year or two years those are cards that could be contained in it but i think they're going to keep it a little more safe and this list has a value is not on the reserve list and is, is relatively safe for the cards that i picked so i'm interested in cards that you think are going to be reprinted in this set i think that we need to start going through a list of these cards i'm actually gonna have a buddy of mine come on either on my main channel or on this channel we're going to scour the cards uh through Sc scourge all the way down to to uh, alpha for cards that are eligible that definitely could see play and those are definitely cards i think that you want to get rid of before these are reprinted these cards are kind of uh, awkward though because the, the demand that for these cards legacy is not enough to to really have a huge demand for a card like gamble for example but if gamble is a four of in a, in a, a main modern deck and gets printed the printing might not even be enough for or the supply might not be enough for demand, a card could go up. But I'm still on the safe side that if any card is eligible to re reprint in the set, you should probably get out of. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Kevin with the Rogue Market. We'll have the Rogue Roundup tomorrow, as well as our 2,000 subscriber contest. I'll get more into detail of that, but I'll just give a TLDR right now for it. There is going to be a competition where you can win my ad revenue. So up to 2,000 subscribers, I made about a box of Battle Bond. So I'm going to be giving out a box of Battle Bond for anyone that just wants to make a mock, a fantasy portfolio of $2,000 of cards uh, for March 1st. Or uh, We'll have it out here too. So you just need to submit a list of cards uh, that equal $2,000. We'll have some other parameters uh, to of, of what you can put on there. And then we will have probably two or three months the contest will go. And within that three months, we'll look at the list. And the person that has picked the best portfolio, the best fantasy portfolio, meaning the, the portfolio that's worth the most money at the end of the time period, will win my box of Battle Bond. At that point, it might be worth a lot because Battle Bond's out of stock. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and be looking forward to the other videos we will be coming out with the Rogue Market. Definitely go, and if you like this, to go and support our Patreon. I have a lot of perks for our patrons or Subscribestar or for our, if you can just you know pay me directly. We have a Pirate Plunders tier where you get distributor pricing. So if you are looking for this set, in particular the Modern Horizons, to give you an example, I've, I've sent off thousands of dollars worth of Battle Bond and other master sets, and we did send off over, oh, we sent off 100, 100 Ultimate Masters at $205 to patrons uh, for being supportive of this channel. So it's a way to support me, keep me going. I like it because it gives me better clout with our distributors. We're, we're, we're doing more money with our distributors, which equals better deals, as well as it gives uh, me a way to give you something back 
for being a supporter of the channel. So it's a win-win. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. A lot of people have made a ton of money off of being a Pirates Plunder crew member. Anyway, this has been Kevin with the Rogue Market. Thanks for watching.